So first of all, just one word about Gary Forge. So we are actually not Google, but we are a company that are, have been contributing to Gary Code Review since 2009. And uh, because we were maintaining a fork of Gary for a customer, and then uh, starting from uh, 2011, we started donating basically all our code to the community. Actually, Gary Forge is transforming, so it's becoming Gary Forge Inc. We are moving all our operations to the US. So for some of uh, the new clients already, they've been boarded to uh, the US company. So we were uh, historically based in London, but we are moving everything to Sunnyvale because the majority of our customers are in uh, the US anyway. So let's talk about some numbers first. So uh, Gary 304 and 305, they have the quite different numbers in terms of uh, commits, uh, comparing the core and the plugins. I always show core and plugins because uh, the plugins in Gary now, they are uh, such um, a diverse variety of different functionality that you cannot really have Gary anymore if you don't have at least one or two plugins. And um, as you can see from Gary 3 to 4, for instance, there were almost as many commits in the plugins than Gary Core itself. When I say plugins, I actually consider also JGit. JGit is actually not a plugin, it's a module that we use inside Gary. But uh, the work in JGit is definitely integral part of what we do in Gary because many of the features of Gary actually are features of JGit. As you can see, as Google is uh, predominant in the development of, of uh, Garrett, so he has uh, over 75% of the commits on Garrett 304. Second place, we got Garrett Forge and SAP. And the same is pretty much the same for plugins, but you can see that Google is working a lot less in plugins, but it added a lot more in core. In 3.5, there is a, a slight change. So we see a lot more uh, pushes in Gary Core. I believe that has been mainly because of the uh, changes in the UI that Milotin will talk about. And um, you will see that there is a lot of activity instead in plugins. And actually, Gary Forge is the top contributors in terms of plugins for Gary 3.5. All the numbers that you see here, they're actually just the crunching of uh, Garrett data using the Garrett Analytics plugin. And they are available on the website analytics.garyhub.io, where we crunch basically every 15 minutes all the commits, all the changes in Garrett, and we extract analytics and precious information. Uh, one uh, word to mention is Qualcomm uh, started contributing a lot more and uh, contributed 8%, and uh, they will present also the work they are doing because it's very interesting in terms of helping migrating to the new version of Gerrit and helping improving performance. So first of all, how do you upgrade to 304 or 305? So first of all, uh, the good news is that you can actually uh, down, uh, upgrade uh, from 3.3 and also from 3.2, and I'm gonna show you a demo of 3.2, with a zero downtime. So here there are actually a typo. You can also upgrade from 302 with zero downtime. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you in a second how to do it. It is documented also in the release notes. If you can accept the downtime, you can upgrade directly to 303 and 3.5, but requires an offline reindex. If you uh, don't want to do an offline reindex, then you need to go through all the intermediate releases. So let me show you for a second now how you do uh, an upgrade using uh, zero downtime. Okay, so this is a Gary 3.2, and I have here an HA setup. We have got Gary.1, Gary.2, those are 3.2 nodes, primary nodes sharing the same file system. And um, you can see also that we are running 3.2 on this version of Gary and uh, uh, we can actually use it transparently. And uh, we can see also that we've got some uh, um, uh, HA proxy serving the traffic. Now I made uh, an LT the first node because I want to start the upgrade. And as you can see, even if the first node is an LT, I can still use Garrett. Now I'm running the upgrade on Garrett01. I just had a simple script that is called upgrade shell. And uh, this will just basically stop Garrett, upload, uh, basically upgrade the plugins and upgrade Garrett running an init and starting Garrett again. So the operation typically takes a few minutes, but if you want to do 
a zero downtime upgrade. Of course, you don't want to have even those minutes of uh, outage. As you can see, during the shutdown of Garrett, Garrett is still working, not just in readall, you can even do changes. For instance, I did a plus two here and everything's working as normal. Even if I'm stopping Garrett and I'm upgrading one of the two primary nodes. Now the upgrade is finished. As you can see, Garrett is up and running and the health check is saying that Garrett is healthy and Garrett is still working. You see, I can still see the changes with the plus two that I just provided before. Now I'm going to the second node and I'm doing exactly the same thing. So as you can see, I'm connected to the second node here and running the upgrade. This is stopping Garrett. Then we'll download the new binaries, run the init and start again. Uh, for the people that have been using uh, Garrett before, and spe especially before 3.0, they will not believe that upgrade has become so easy. So before it was kind of a nightmare because of all the database schema changes, but since the introduction of NodeDB is pretty straightforward. As you can see, during the upgrade, I can continue using Garrett and all the changes they have done, even during the upgrade of the different nodes, they've been absolutely uh, accepted by the primary nodes and automatically uh, let's say replicated and indexed on the other node. And as you can see, I am on 3.5 RC4. There we go. Let's go to the features. I will concentrate on the backend and I will move to Militeam to continue the presentation on the GUI. So one thing that is important from 3.4 onwards, say bye-bye to Java 8. It's not, sorry, 3.4 is still compatible at source level for Java 8, but you will need to rebuild Gary yourself from uh, 3.5, say bye-bye to Java 8. So the only JVM that is uh, supported is Java 11. So if you want to upgrade to 3.4 or 3.5, please do upgrade to Java 11 beforehand. So if you're on 3.2, upgrade to Java 11 on 3.2, and then start the upgrade to 3.5, exactly in the same way that I showed you before. So there are a lot of improvements in Garrett 3.4 and 3.5, and you will see that the majority of them are related to usability, in performance. So first of all, performance improvement on the uh, mergeability computation. So this is in a nutshell when Garrett needs to compute the mergeability flag for each change from 3.4 onwards is disabled by default. And this was because the complexity of computing it was uh, exponential and uh, actually was quadratic, sorry, not exponential. And uh, that was creating a lot of problems in terms of system load and slowdowns. If you want the old behavior back, that's the way you can get it back. There are a lot of performance improvement also in the conflicts predicate. This one also was creating a lot of hurdles in terms of CPU utilization on the server. And again, this is disabled, sorry, this is enabled by default, but you can disable it. And possibly from 3.6 will disable by default. So if you want to have the performance improvements, you will need to set conflicts predicate enabled false. And uh, one thing that is really important, ref table. So basically from 3.4, you can finally convert your repositories to a ref table. For the guys that don't know what is ref table, I will spend more time tomorrow morning when I will talk about big repos, but definitely something that you want to use if you have a large mono repo with a lot of refs. Uh, we got new caches. So we go quite quickly on this one because you can go through a slide by yourself, but all those caches, they were focused in uh, uh, reducing the latency of the GUI and making sure that the GUI is rendered faster. There we go. The diff cache, specifically this is, was for the diff uh, display of the chain screen and Militeam will show also some improvements that um, this, has, this has provided to the GUI. Approvals, new caches. We introduced limits. If you don't put limits on Garrett, it's very hard to guarantee performance. And uh, and this is something that Edwin did, and it's really important, is the ability to define deadlines and cancellation. So I will go quite quickly on this one because there is a lot more information on the documentation, but basically it will give you the ability to define the maximum time that a certain operation will have to spend on the backend. And this is because some before, some of the user could have, uh, let's say, triggered maybe a processing that would have lasted for half an hour, and you would have you would have not realized until you saw that the system load was, I don't know, going up to 40 for half an hour. Now you can define deadlines, and in that way, so when the processing is taking too much time, 
that is going to be automatically killed by Garrett. Uh, there are breaking changes in plugins, so careful about breaking changes. So if you have HTML plugins, I'm sorry, you need to adapt them. Uh, of course, the community can help you. Just write to the repo discuss mailing list. Uh, SSH, this is one of the major changes. So we have upgraded to mean SSHD to 2.6 in 3.4 and in 2, uh, I believe 3.7, no, sorry, still uh, 2.6 also in 3.05. And this means that there are some algorithms that they are disabled by default. You can enable them again. And the client implementation by default is uh, um, uh, moved from JSCH to uh, OpenSSH. Sorry, uh, to SSHD from Apache Mina. So that means that if you see replication issues over SSH after upgrading to 304, you may want to bring the old implementation back in this way. Client implementation equal JSCH. Uh, this is a very important feature. So Garrett can manage users with case insensitive. So it means that a user that is John Doe, all over case or mixed case will be absolutely the same. And the documentation has a lot of information on how to do it online or offline. So you can migrate to cases sensitive without any downtime. If you create a brand new Gary 3.5 site from scratch, it's going to be case insensitive by default. And this is very important. So we did a survey and we have seen that there was only one user of Elasticsearch. And because Elasticsearch moved to a known Apache 2 licensing from 7.11, we are left basically with almost only one release of Elasticsearch that we can still use, and very soon, not even that one. So Elasticsearch is not going away, but will become a lib module. So it means that 3.5 is already all the machinery to use Elasticsearch externally as a lib module. And as Gary Forge, we basically took all the current code that was in Garrett, and we created a lib module for you. And uh, very soon, will pop up on Garrett Review. Hi. Uh, I'm Militin. I'm a Garrett front-end developer uh, since 2019. I work at Google uh, and I will present you new UI in Garrett 3, 4 and 3, 5. So this is um, this slide is about the Chex uh, UI that is now part of a Garrett front-end. Uh, and uh, um, you can uh, just implement a simple plugin to connect the CI uh, with the uh, Garrett, and then you will get the UI from the Garrett. But this will be presented later um, in the later session. Uh, so Garrett can now uh, fill, uh, port the comments from older part set to newer part set. So you will never forget. You can the old comments from the old part set, and it will find a good position uh, where to put the old part set. Um, So the next one is uh, comment summary. So under the comment uh, message, there is now comment summary where you see a number of resolved, unresolved comments and drafts. This is updated once you make a comment resolved, this summary is updated automatically. Uh, it's clickable and it will open the comments tab. Uh, so, in the comments tab, actually, now there are not only comments, but there is also comment context. So you can see on which line the comments was uh, uh, added, and uh, also plus and minus three lines. Um, so it's better to understand the context of the. Uh, yes. Um, so we did a few improvements in the uh, change view UI, and one of the improvements. The new related uh, changes. So before it showed actually first 20 changes, uh, sometimes only one category like relation chain and which I hidden uh, other categories. Um, and actually, you also maybe not see uh, the current change. The new UI is actually showing uh, uh, also 20 changes, but uh, it's uh, showing. A current change always, and uh, it's trying to show a plus and minus uh, changes in the category. Uh, it puts the most changes in the first category relation chain because that's the one that is most use, used uh, on the data. 
but uh, and you can click show all and it will list all the changes in that category. Uh, another improvement in the comments tab is actually uh, ability to change a sorting method from the files to the timestamp. Uh, also, there is a new UI for the filtering by unresolved, resolved, or drafts. And uh, you can also um, uh, pick which uh, reviewer you are interested, like with comments from which users, uh, reviewer. So that's uh, useful. Um, kind of the, another feature for the comments is the comments link, which uh, when you click, you get a link to the comment uh, in the clipboard. And uh, once you use this uh, link, it will nicely scroll to that comment, and uh, uh, it will also highlight the comment thread or comment. So uh, it's very easy now to send comment to someone else. Uh, next one is uh, a small feature, but uh, useful if your product has a localization. Uh, we, sh we show a small dot instead of uh, nothing like before for the uh, soft hyphen, which is uh, giving information where to make um, this uh, slash uh, like the dash in uh, when uh, separating in the next line. It's also for the localization. Um, there's another small feature that's like now there is a small auto like there is auto completion uh, for the topic so you can easily find uh, to which topic uh, you want to put the change in uh, hashtags are not yet done but uh, uh, i think the, maybe next version there will be hashtags uh, auto completion and the last from ui update is uh, better performance so currently uh, we don't throw the view and change view when uh, we go uh, between them so if you was if you were already in the change view and and you go back to that from the diff view it's instant like the, it's like a uh, few milliseconds uh, so that's a very nice improvement also we have a faster diff loading for large files large files mean like and more than 10,000 lines. Now it's, I think, sometimes almost 50% faster. Uh, we have also faster change page view uh, when uh, you have lots of messages because before we rendered all, all these messages, even that they were not visible. So now, like, there was a drop. If you have like hundreds of messages, it was uh, faster from 40 seconds to five seconds. And uh, Lots of work where we are migrating from Polymer to Lit, uh, which is the next uh, framework uh, from the Polymer team. And this, we already we migrated uh, most of the used uh, components on the change view, and that already resulted with 10% faster page load, like the first page load of the change view. Uh, And uh, yes, so we have uh, also, like, there is a code owner uh, implementation, which has a nice UI where you can pick uh, uh, owner of the, of the files that you need to review from. Uh, I think that, yeah. And that's all from me, so back to Luca. Yeah, thank you very much, Milutin. That's really cool stuff. So let's wrap up and then I will run a poll. So uh, there are a lot of improvements also on the replication side because we have seen that almost there were almost the same number of changes in plugins compared to Garrett itself. So there is a very cool feature implemented by Qualcomm that is the ability of distributing replication events across a Garrett cluster and uh, all the documentation described very well what it is about. And there is also a feature from um, uh, March, uh, actually, sorry, Yatsek, they implemented the ability to uh, split a big push into batches. And that is really cool for um, uh, endpoints that they are struggling with uh, big pushes, because instead of a uh, keep on pushing all the time, a push that is failing, it's going to be in smaller batches, they are be eventually succeeding. With regards to other plugins, we got a new plugin, and Marcin will talk about that, pull replication. 
is ultra fast compared to the push replication plugin. And uh, we got a lot of new cloud native integrations. And again, Ponch and Tony will talk about that. So I will not go in details. Uh, let's go quickly. Uh, yeah, last but not least, I already mentioned this one in the contributor summit, but we have a brand new persistent storage for um, uh, Garrett caches. This is incredibly fast compared to the previous H2 based Garrett cache. And most importantly, it's designed for low latency and never blocks. And that is going to be super important because we'll increase overall your Gary performance across the board and will allow you to use persistent caches where before you couldn't. Uh, one note, final note, is important. So Gary 3.2 and 2.16 are finally end of life. It means that if you need any help, you can get help, of course, from Repo Discuss, but we won't be making any new releases. So the last one for 2.16 was 2.16.24. And the last one for 3.2 was 3.2.14. And then there will not be any fixes anymore to those releases. Okay, so let's go to the question and answers. Before uh, going to the Q&A, I want you to answer a question from me and I will answer your question, <laughs> let's put it in this way. So let me run uh, the first poll. That is, uh, uh, what version of Garrett you're running in production? So you have now around, let's say, um, a couple of minutes to answer. So the good news is that the majority of people are over the 3.0 version. So we got basically 50 to 61% of people. Sorry, am I reading correct? Yeah, 61% of people are actually uh, over the 3.0 release. But we still have a significant 26% of people still on uh, an old version, older than 2.16. Okay, so let me now then go to the second question is because it's actually a follow up. That is why you are on an old release. So what is blocking you from upgrading? And what is the major blocker that you see as a roadblock for not moving forward? So you have another uh, couple of videos to answer and then we'll go to Q&A and then we'll wrap up. So it's interesting and only 35% of the people voted. That means that really the people, they are stuck in the old releases now. They are voting to say why they are not actually migrating. And that's good news because we want to know that because we want to help you out moving forward. As you have seen from Militin, there are a lot of uh, cool features that we definitely want you to use and benefit from. Okay, let's close this poll. Let me share the results. So the top reason is outage window is too large for upgrading. And here I got a good news that you have seen from the demo, it was not just the demo, it's a reality. You can definitely upgrade with zero downtime. It means that you don't need an outage window at all. So on Gary Hub, we have been upgrading from version 2.1 up to version 3.5 that we are planning actually to do uh, by Monday. And we didn't have a single outage because we started introducing a zero downtime uh, process for upgrading and now is part of the Garrett documentation. If you need any help, you can reach out to me or anyone else in the community. If you need any help as a business, you can reach out to Garrett Forge as well. We can help you out. So then we've got the second reason is breaking changes. I know that that could be an issue and we want to know more about those and how we can mitigate those. And uh, people that try many times but failed, again, we can help, just let us know and lack of support. So we have now officially an enterprise support link into the Gary page. So if you want actually us to help you out and doing the migration together with you, we can do that. You, you can contact any company that does enterprise support and they can definitely help you and they will, let's say, guide you through the migration process. Okay, so let's go to the Q&A now. We've got a couple more minutes, but I will continue answering. So let's go from, uh, um, yeah, Matthias is saying zero downtime upgrade doesn't help with upgrading from old pre 3.x version. Actually, it does help. You can do zero downtime upgrade even before 3.x. And if you want to know more, you can reach out to me or Gary Forge. We can help you out with this one. It is definitely possible from, I believe, version at least 2. Uh, I remember 2.5 at least. So there is definitely a strategy you can use for uh, doing zero downtime. Curious if case insensitive username will remain in the future releases or if we are accepted to convert these insensitive at some point. Uh, 
I don't really know at this time. Maybe it will be a question for the Q&A with the maintainers. So far, 3.5 means that absolutely you will still be able to use case sensitive username if you want to.